Good. Okay. Merci. Referee giving final instructions to our two fighters for this next bout, Morad Sari from Paris, France, 23 and 2. He is the number five lightweight fighter going against Sam Ai. And you see well over 100 fights, this man from Bangkok, Thailand. Mike, how can a man be in this type of shape with so many fights? Well, Sam Ai in the blue trunks, only in his mid-20s, and, and he's had 140 fights. In Thailand, they start very young, 11 or 12 years old as amateurs. Their pro careers come, come in at about 16, and they fight almost every weekend in one of the major stadiums. A semi has, has gained quite a bit of notoriety. No knockdown there, roundhouse kick to the leg by, uh, sorry, some damage, but no knockdown. Semai attained a lot of notoriety by beating Dida two years ago here in Paris, and he has been invited back regularly to fight on these, uh, these cards here. Uh, this fight is significant for both fighters. The winner will get a shot at the upcoming Diafat Harper uh, winner, and the winner of that bout will then challenge for the super lightweight world title. You see the action is so quick. The kick's coming like lightning. And that is what makes each fighter so dangerous. Leaping roundhouse kick by Sari, no damage. These fighters are fighting in the 142 pound division. And at this weight, it's an excellent mix uh, of the fighters in this division of speed and power. Sam I got some damage done, but then Sari took him down. This bout is in the Muay Thai division, and virtually anything goes. No strikes to the groin or, or uh, to the back of the spine, but almost anything else is allowable. Those roundhouse kicks to the legs when the fighter has one foot elevated, we don't see it in any other division but Muay Thai, but those are devastating on a fighter. Another flying left-footed kick for Sari. And one thing also we want to point out, Matt, Mike, we saw that Sari grabbed Semi's leg, and that too is legal to a certain degree. They can grab for one second, there has to be a follow-up strike, then they have to let go or the referee will break it. Chanting Murad, their favorite, favorite Murad Sari. They'd like to see him win this bout and eventually go for that world title. Unlike the last two fights we saw, we're seeing a lot more kicking. It seems to be the predominant weapon. Can we expect that the rest of the way? In this division, kicking is is the predominant weapon of fighters in the uh, lightweight, super light, and welterweight divisions. They're just big enough to inflict a lot of damage with those kicks, but they still have their speed. So very active and entertaining round one between Murad Sari and Sam Ai. Sari getting some instruction between rounds as they prepare to go battle one more time. Now, Sari held that leg a little too long. I, I, as the referee pulled him off of that clinch, he, uh, he gave a quick warning to Sari to let go of that leg a little sooner. A lot of times better to ask for forgiveness than for permission, so he's going to take all the liberties he can because Sam I is a very dangerous fighter. Going to the canvas and having to, to get back up again, that takes a lot out of a fighter. If they can do that to each other, they'll try. Boy, Sari scored with both the feet and the hands, again. Very quick straight lefts by Sari. Sari seems very pumped up from the crowd. More aggressive than we've seen him in previous fights. Really taking things to Samai. It seems like 
Samaya may be used to opponents who will back down from his strengths. Well, he's got an opponent in Murad Sari who just keeps coming forward, and that seems to have confused Samaya a little bit so far. It's a problem that Thai fighters, when they fight in Europe or in North America, tend to have. In Thailand, the fights are slower paced for the first few rounds. Things really don't heat up till the fourth or fifth rounds. Samai isn't used to this much activity this early on. But one thing we do want to point out, they certainly are conditioned for it. We don't expect Samai to run out of gas anytime in the next few rounds. I don't expect it from either of these fighters. They both are well prepared for this, this, uh, this playoff in the super lightweight division for the world title shot. They've trained hard, and both of these guys know they've got one shot to be in that playoff. Good counter kick from Samai lands. You see the red welt now in the left back of Murad Sari. He is certainly taking some punishment from Samai. That one to the breadbasket and strong from Samai. As is typical with fighters from Thailand, those roundhouse kicks from Semai are being delivered full power with little regard for whether they land on an elbow, a hip bone, everything is still full power. No warning whatsoever on any of those kicks. They just snap from nowhere. It's amazing that either fighter can react to it. You'll see Sari, as most European fighters do, setting up his kicks, as he did there. Two punches, then the kick. But the Thai fighters, they just come out of nowhere. Back to Paris, Morad Sari on the left of your screen. Right there is Samai from Bangkok, Thailand. Mike, we talked about the style of the Thailand fighters. Now is when in Thailand, their fight would start picking up in the third round. Could we expect to see that from Semai, or is he had to fight too much too soon? I think he's had to fight too much too soon. I, I, I don't think that he's been able to reserve his energy for these rounds the way he would in a, in a fight in his home country. Sari has really made him fight, really taken the fight to him in, in the first two rounds. Sari's punches coming unrelentlessly. Semi in trouble. Another weakness of the Thai trained fighters, their punching skills don't match their kicking skills. Sari trained by Sammy Kepchi in Paris. He knows what he's doing inside with his fists. And that clinch you see is a very familiar scene in Thailand, not so much when you see Muay Thai fights in the United States or in Europe. It is certainly a strength of the Thai fighters, but the referees do not let it go on for an extended period of time outside of the Far East. Well, in this case, Semai is trying to buy some time and rest with those clinches inside. Half-hearted knee strike attempts by Semai, one of which just struck the referee in the outside of his thigh. Uh, mostly, he's just trying to rest. Well, that's to be a great disadvantage to the Thai fighters not to be able to use that flinch outside of their region. Sari not letting up. Impressive accuracy by Sari. Those punches and kicks are landing. Samai's not showing it, but he's taking some damage from those. Trying to maintain a poker face, but he's hurting. Nah, and that is no good. You saw Sari with a punch in the back of the head of Semai. He was warned for it. Now, if that continues, Semai will be warned by the referee. And the referee, in fact, just spoke quickly to Semai about those clinches. If he is going to clinch with Sari, he has to be delivering knee strikes, some attempt to be fighting inside, not just to hold and clinch and fall to the canvas. Semai just seems to be waiting too long for his time to attack. Sari, on the other hand, very aggressive. Those fast, out-of-nowhere roundhouse kicks we saw earlier in the bout from Semai 
are now being delivered more deliberately. Sari is seeing them coming and is no longer being hit by them. Samai using the clinch as a defensive maneuver now instead of an offensive maneuver. Trying to save himself from being knocked out. And he is close. End of the round. Plenty of action. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back to Paris. That is the bell for round four. We're scheduled for five in this lightweight fight from Paris. Murad Sari in the red trunks going against Samai from Bangkok, Thailand. Sari in front of his hometown Paris crowd. Sari so, shows no signs of letting up. He's continuing round four the way he ended round three, staying on Samai. Leading with the right hand, following with the left, and in the left roundhouse. Over and over again. Striking with all of those blows on Samai. The confidence that Samai showed in the first round or two is out the door. Left hand by Sari, well-timed, well-timed counter to the right roundhouse attempt by Samai. I like the way that Sari is approaching this fight. Steadily built up points for the judges' scorecards. Should be well ahead at this point. Boy, if you rate aggressiveness, he started at 10 and he's still there. And these European judges rate aggressiveness highly on their scale of priorities. <laughs> Semai, as most fighters in Thailand do, has dropped one of his names, or his forename or surname, in favor of just one name, and is known just by that Semai name. Now, in Thailand, they will add as a as a uh, surname, the name of their gym to be identified easily by the people watching. Here in Paris, it's just the one name that they go by. Sari is down. No knockdown, though, scored. Semai almost entirely defensive now. Relying totally on counter strikes. Doesn't seem to have any game plan for attacking Sari. No target is too distant on the body of Samai. Sari has peppered him from head to toe. Sari's got about a two inch reach advantage and he's used that very well in this bout. His long right jab and that left crossover roundhouse kick has served him well. Another good round for Murad Sari. Ready now for the final three minutes of this Muay Thai fight between Murad Sari and the orange and Samai in the blue trunks. So far, the fight has been all Sari. What can we expect? from Sari. We expect him to be laid back a little bit because he knows he's ahead or is he just a style of fighter who's going to go 100% all five? Uh, early indications here in round five is Sari isn't going to change anything. He's still stalking Samai all around the ring. Certainly knows that he's well ahead on points. Doesn't seem to want to be taking any chances on that. I can't say I disagree with that strategy. Samai has has one way to win this bout, and that's by knockout. But he has consistently taken a defensive role when Sari has kept the pressure on. And defensively, he's not gonna knock Sari out. I think if Sari keeps the pressure on, he'll win this fight big. Well, that shows the respect that Sari certainly has for his opponent. Your Samai certainly has a knockout in him somewhere. He, he can summon that. But Sari has to stay on the offensive. His work through four rounds, there's no reason it wouldn't work here in the fifth. That brief interlude was the referee warning 
the corner of Semai to not stand on the ring canvas. I'm sorry, the corner of Sari to get down from the ring canvas. successful in this round and getting to that midsection of Sari with his kicks. Strong front kick by Sari and it, it just shows a lack of reaction that Semai has at this point. I don't think he's as tired as he is confused. The final seconds of this fight. And that could be the last exchange between these two game fighters. And there it is. Five rounds of fervent fighting that leaves both fighters in a heap almost. Murad Sari ending this bout on the same note with which he fought throughout. Aggressively, full power kicks. Aiming for the inside of the left thigh of Samai. Nearly took him down with that strike. Time now for our decision. And it goes to the hometown boy, Murad Sari over Samai. Congratulations to him and also to Curtis Schuster and Jer